Hi there, I thought I'd make uh, another video because uh, after all this is Euro Gold Exchange I should be talking about gold and silver and metals and I have been for for a long time and I basically quit because I, I thought well uh, how does it reflect to be constantly in a kind of a doom uh, scenario mode but uh, really there are some serious uh, things going on uh, silver is skyrocketing and there's a discussion about the debt ceiling and the discussion should not be uh, should we raise it or not it is simply why is this discussion happening and from an american perspective if if america is the dominant country in the world it doesn't have to have a debt ceiling uh, conversation i think the limiting factor in terms of creating new money uh, for any purpose and of course it's multiplied by the banks when it's created is that there is no fuel to buy with that money so as soon as you do it you, uh, and the fuel is not there, it will raise the price of the fuel because there's more money competing for the same fuel and that's the whole point. I think that what we are seeing is that the US is in a final battle in the Middle East over the oil, uh, it tries to keep it from China and it's more or less losing that battle and, uh, and as it is losing it, it's losing the guaranteed supply so it is losing the ability to create money without any, uh, uh, any inflation and so it tries to uh, make a discussion about the debt ceiling and hopefully uh, and possibly even default on its debt. Uh, I personally I have a constant uh, uh, theme which is to say that debt is completely senseless, useless, meaningless because it is burnt oil. It's just money that's been created and then it comes into circulation, people buy fuel with it, but the, the the person that sells the fuel doesn't want to put the money back into circulation because it only comes back to him at a certain point to buy more fuel. So he's giving away his fuel twice for the same money. That's not what he wants. Even though he can get lots of stuff, there's just so much you can you can buy with your with your money and that you need, and then you have to sell it again or you have to give it to somebody or loan it out. So it's just not effective, and that's the whole system. Uh, you know, everybody is skirting around the the, the fundamental principle at work. Everybody says, well, U.S. went off the gold standard and that caused uh, a rise in the credit and etc. Well, be open, <laughs> be clear about it. U.S. went off the gold standard and that that basically removed the limit of the amount of oil they could import, which of course uh, created a huge boom in the economy and a population growth. And now that oil is 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 running out, <laughs> and the, the debt. Is, has to be uh, somewhere and all the money has to be invested somewhere because it cannot go into circulation because then somebody would buy try to buy fuel with it which is not what you you want to do because you want to use fresh new money that comes from the government because that's the money you control fresh new money that comes from the bank because that's the money that you control you control the energy spigots you know Mark Faber came close because he was talking about the fact that, that the America was trying to control the, the oil flow to China by dominating the Middle East. But the banks control the, the oil and the fuel flow and energy flow in society. And they do that because they have an alliance with energy companies. That's my that's basically how I see it. And somebody told me recently, well, maybe that's not on purpose. I believe there's no way that cannot be on purpose. Everybody knows what's happening. You just have to look at it. So you don't say the US went off the gold standard and, and created the debt. No, you just uh, say, well, the US uh, removed the limit uh, of, of, of oil trade. Basically, it became the owner of the Middle East oil supply and it started to supply itself with the oil by printing the money and the debt is just meaningless, it's completely meaningless, that's just for, for ordinary people to feel fucked up about, you should never feel guilty about any debt. Um, I think that's, and so, you know, gold and silver is, if you, okay, you can look at it this way, and somebody else uh, talks about this and, and says, well, uh, what is it, uh, Hudson, Michael Hudson, Yes, it's a global attempt to lower the wages, and uh, oh, it's such a such a shame. And of course, you know, what does it mean to lower the wages? That means that you do more work for less. That do you? You do more labor. That means that you need less energy to. Uh, so you you have less energy to expend. If you have less money, you can spend it on less. And you can spend less uh, energy. So basically, if, if I cannot buy products, then the products are not being sold and nobody has to spend energy to make the products and deliver them. And that's huge savings in energy. And that's why is that, so why do they lower the wages? To, to remove the energy waste 
that they basically perceive, and I'm talking about they, the big industries, in the consumer sphere. Consumers waste energy. And you can have two attitudes towards this. One is that you, 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 you see there's a glut, there's enough, so you go on a binge and you create much credit and people can consume all they want and you make everything and you're happy because you're the industry and you're making everything. Somebody tells you, well, the oil is running out and you have to make a choice. Am I going to give it to the consumer? The money to the consumer that is going to spend it on fuel and travel all around the world and, and to buy all my stuff? Or primarily to us, just to make stuff? To, make, to, to enable us to make stuff? Well, the choice is clear. That, and, and who has the lobby? The industry has the lobby. So the industry has been lobbying in order to get all the money uh, in, in society. So they can buy all the fuel in society, so they can keep making what they're making, and it doesn't really matter uh, uh, what the price is, because they're making it, and they're putting it into the market based on credit. That's, whole, that's how the whole system works. It's a Keynesian system. Maybe it's, a, it's a, a, a bastardized version of the Keynesian system, but it's the Keynesian system, which doesn't look at demand. It's basically not demand-driven. And my old, the way I'm kind of, the way this tend, if you if you see how this will trend, you know, if you're not intelligent about it, like if you don't, somebody I know says, well, people don't learn, you can't learn nothing from history. I think you can learn something from his history, and everybody that knows the 20th century history uh, can have learned something from it. Uh, which is that you shouldn't allow industry to set the rules, because then you have a million uh, rubber boots and everybody working in slave camps. Because what did Stalin do? He basically uh, increased labor uh, for production purposes so that he could rich, uh, live uh, rich in the cities and, and, and remove a lot of people from society so there's you know, more to go around for everybody. Everybody was happy about that. I'm not sure about that by the way, but anyway, he was a complete maniac tyrant massacre, mass murderer. You know, Google, uh, Google uh, uh, Holodomor, Holodomor. That's uh, the killing of about 12 million, uh, I believe, uh, Ukraine people, or 7 million Ukraine people by starving them, by removing the grain. Anyway, I'm completely uh, digressing. But if industry gets its way, then it will make sure that it has something to do. And if it's not buying stuff to, or selling stuff to consumers and trying to seduce them to buy it, then it will be <laughs> supplying them the weapons to kill each other. And that's what has happened since the basically the, the, the existence of industry. Now I'll keep this video short. Uh, I'll say two things. One of them is that if you want to have a labor-based society where more manual labor is done and people do more for each other in terms of supplying what they need and it's not, not all Walmart and stuff like that. You need gold and silver because you have lots of uh, valuable goods and services to exchange in a highly detailed uh, system. Not that you go to the supermarket and get everything and you go to the car dealer and you get everything, but that you have all kinds of small deals going on all the time. You need a means of exchange for that and for that you have gold and silver. So the, the society that has most of it can create the most liquidity among its citizens. It's not for hoarding and then trying to buy something in it. No, it's just for using it as a means of exchange. That's what I would say. I would suggest buy all those uh, uh, <laughs> Let somebody buy all that new money that the US has made. They have billions of coins. That's perfect. It doesn't have to be gold and silver as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and the other thing, of course I'm forgetting, oh yeah, it's simply a question. You know, because they always go on about jobs. Uh, simple question, which society has more jobs? A society with big industries like Walmart, Coca-Cola, Nike, Ford, Chrysler, etc. Or a society with none of those big automated, machinated, oil-driven companies. So there's your answer to your job security argument. It doesn't work. Anyway, thanks for listening. And, uh, and uh, well, uh, I think that uh, that even a European ratings agency won't change anything to the fact that it's about energy. It's a fight about energy. And, you know, once it gets explicit, once it gets clear, and people get in real trouble, uh, it will be hard to, uh, to avoid uh, conflicts like we already have in Libya. And so I think the most important lesson for people is to
to act upon uh, the perception or the situation in which industry claims it can uh, take the lead. Because once the industry takes the lead, a war is guaranteed.